God, it's loud. Like, bruh, Jesus Christ. This is how I host 130,000 Minecraft servers. Well, well, well. What's up, Tech Channel? I'm back. I was gone for a month, but now I'm back. And you didn't misread the title. In the month I was gone, I started a Minecraft hosting company. And as of today, I'm hosting 130,000 Minecraft servers for people for free. I thought I'd make this video because it's kind of like a follow-up from my last video. Like, hey, look at my home lab I've just started. So today, Holy mother of God, there's 130,000 people's Minecraft servers being hosted on it. I thought I'd give you a rundown of the hardware, what I've learned, what I've changed, what I see on my dashboard. I thought I'd also explain a little bit of how it makes money, even though it's for free. It's kind of like the gambit, like you know those social media companies that they make money, but it's, it's a website, it's for free, it's kind of a little bit of that. So. Back to the server room, eh? Come on! As you can hear, it's now a lot louder in the server room than when I previously showed it off. And it's only gonna get louder. Basically, everything's been running at basically max capacity. Go on, lad! So the back room of my office has become a little bit unusable because of the noise that this thing makes. But sacrifices must be made for total Minecraft server domination. Ah, they say, Toby, they say, Toby, how do you host so many Minecraft servers? Well, earplugs. Help a lot. No, so I'm gonna yell over the servers because it gives you an idea of what I've been dealing with for the last month of my life. So, the Minecraft hosting company I run is called Play.Hosting. That is literally the link to it. Play.Hosting if you wanna check it out and host your own Minecraft server. It all entirely runs on this rack. All of these servers work together to host a combined capacity of 130,000 servers. That is not as much storage, however, as you think it would be. Uh, 130,000 Minecraft servers only comes to around 29 terabytes. <laughs> Only 29 terabytes, yeah. 29 terabytes of other people's shit. No, it's a cool project. It's a cool project. Genuinely, I think, I think it's very cool. So before I get into the software side and hop on my PC and show you what this looks like as pretty graphs and numbers and revenue, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I'm doing this. Play.hosting is a massive, massive passion project of mine. Back when I was younger, I never could afford a traditional host. So I set out on a mission to provide the majority of paid host features for free using this. However, it does have its limitations, you know, my energy bill to be precise. And we'll go into more details of that later. But I just wanted to show you where the magic happens if you didn't manage to catch my last video. If you want details about the hardware and specs that all of this runs, you can go check that out in my last video. But now, this is a message to Minecraft server owners. If you own a traditional Minecraft server and you're paying a lot for hosting and want to pay less, I am more than happy to host your Minecraft server for you for way less money. You just have to put up with my with my imminent craze Minecraft server owners I want to help you drop a comment on this video send me a message on discord contact me on Twitter I, I want to allow people to like develop their dreams on this you know all right enough said let me hop over to you my computer and show you like a lot more about what I do to the computer ah <sighs> that's so much better listen you actually might be able to hear it a little bit in the background, but not as much. All right, where to begin? First of all, I'm gonna show you the information dashboard for the service. My plan is, is to try to show you guys as much as possible. So today's day is 17th of April. It's a wonderful Thursday. And what I'm showing you right now is the traffic. So online right now, there's 182 players connected. We're using around 600 gigabytes of RAM. We have around 373 disk space, relatively good on all machines. Now, let me break down this network graph for you. This is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Interesting. So on this network graph, you can see you have something called inbound wings, you have outbound wings, and then you have outbound tunnel, and then inbound tunnel. So what the outbound tunnel and inbound tunnel is, this is basically the raw web traffic, like the amount of data sent over the internet to each individual Minecraft player. All of this traffic here is like Minecraft players moving around, placing blocks, interacting with their inventories. Great. Where it starts to get a little bit more complicated is this inbound traffic wings and outbound traffic wings. If you don't 
know what Wings is. Wings is basically a tool for hosting Minecraft servers, which containerizes every single Minecraft server into like its own little box. Containerizing is not a new concept. It's very similar to, if those of you watching know Docker. Docker is a form of containerizing. Also you have for virtual machines as well, for virtualization, you can do some containerizing there. That's your VMware, your Proxmox. But let me break down this traffic. So this Wings inbound traffic, this is users uploading files to the controller panel. Let's say you have a Minecraft world, you're playing with your friends, and you want to move from your paid host to a free one, for example. What you do is you'd upload your Minecraft world to the server, like so. Now, where it gets more complicated, Wings outbound. This small amount of Wings outbound here, this is people downloading files from their panel. However, as you can see next door, there is not 130,000 servers running back there. What makes Play.Hosting special is how we do our database. So all of these spikes here, you can see we get some traffic of around 4.8 gigabits. This is server files. When servers shut down, Wings takes those server files and then sends them back to the database, freeing up more space on the compute node to run other people's Minecraft servers. It's kind of like a relay race of servers. So let's say I'm playing on my server. I stop for the day, I shut it down. The service then goes, oh, this server isn't being used anymore. I should give someone else this compute capacity. So then someone else who's waiting to start their Minecraft server will be like, hey, I'll take that space, then the database will go, right, let's send that server to that available slot. In order for that slot to become clear, the user files of the person who stopped playing have to be sent back to the database, and you can see this happens in batches every 10 minutes, which allows us to have the 130,000 server capacity I mentioned. You can see here, we have some other interesting graphs. This is our CPU usage across all the nodes. You can see we have high power nodes, which run the new Ryzen 9 AM5 socket CPUs. Incredible CPUs for Minecraft servers. If you're ever looking to self-host, if you're looking at what hardware to rent from like Phoenix Snap, OVH to run your own Wings instance and your own Pterodactyl panel, highly recommend the AMD Ryzen 9, no, the 7950X, sorry. That CPU is an absolute beast for Minecraft from world generation, from even running Folia instances. So that's your multi-threaded Minecraft server jar, which isn't typically used very much. It does everything. The Ryzen 9 7950X is the perfect CPU for Minecraft. So we have three nodes running that. They don't have as much RAM as I currently want them to. They have 64 gigs of RAM each. I want to upgrade that to 192 gigs of RAM each, which will basically triple the capacity of those nodes. And then you can see we have node 1, 2, 2, 2, which is a different VM running on node 2. Then we have 3 and 4, and then the tunnel, which is the ingress traffic. That's also your level 7 DDoS mitigation protection. It stops traditional DOS attacks, like a slow Loris attack, which is very infamous in the Minecraft community. So that's what the tunnel does. But these nodes here are all running the AMD Epic 7551, which is a great CPU. You can even run it in a dual configuration on Super Micro motherboards are very good. I highly recommend Super Micro motherboards all the freaking way. I had a couple issues with the Super Micro H11 DSi, but I was able to get it resolved pretty quickly. Nerd talk, nerd talk, nerd talk. I know. And then you can see down here, this is the available RAM on each node. You can see not a lot of RAM available on any of these nodes. They all are basically going flat out because how many people are hosting on the server? This one, this one, this one's got so much RAM. RAM for days on Node 2. 111 gigabytes. Just no one, no one's hosting on Node 2 apparently. So that is the raw data. This is the control panel where I monitor everything and I see, hey, is something wrong with the service? Let me see if I set this the last 24 hours. So look at this dip here. We can see the service cut out for a little bit, but what I can see is I can then go to my graphs and be like, oh, that's a really abnormal player drop off on the service. What happened? And then I can go down to my CPU usage graphs here. Like, hmm, that all looks normal. Okay, I wonder what happened then. Then I go down to my network usage graph and then look at this. You can see that the servers were crashing because it was an out of memory error. Look, go to node two, also run out of RAM here. Node three, especially, very similar story. So this panel is especially good because you have all of your graphs to be able to diagnose any problems the servers might be having. Now, let me show you my claim I made at the start of the video is that I currently host 130,000 Minecraft servers. So this is the website for play.hosting. You can see, yes, it's free forever, built by Tubbo. I, I mean, it's true, I built the servers myself. You can see how many players are online live, how many servers are running, and what percentage of resources are being utilized. This is a really good thing to have on the website because it shows you what free performance to expect on your server. If this 
is at 30%, you can expect to get much better performance than whether it's at 60. This metric is basically how much available RAM there is on all the nodes combined. You could also, if you're interested in what our SLA is, for your more technically inclined people, our service level agreement or SLA is basically how much time we promise to be online. It's 26.82%. In the industry, 26.82% SLA is loads. That would cost you thousands. What, for the service to be online, 26.88% of the time? That is so rare. Uh, I'm being sarcastic, by the way. That's incredibly bad. <laughs> let me show you a little bit of the server. You'll see there's actually some adverts here. That's how we make money. But let, you, let me show you the fun stuff. Hey, so here you go. Here's the control panel. It's the pterodactyl control panel. It is customized by Lilypad, who are my partner on this project. But if you look here, as promised, that number is not a lie. In limbo right now, there is 134,000 Minecraft servers that we host for people with 347 active in a single pterodactyl panel. I must admit, that's absurd. Off the top of my head, I maybe know two or three hosts, like Minecraft hosts, that have that many server instances. Like, that is insane. Now, let me show you how much storage that uses. Come on, bestie, you can do this. There we go. So you can see, for those 134,000 servers, the database is actually only 27.27 terabytes of storage, or terabytes. I don't really know the difference. I'm gonna be so totally real with you, but... All right, now, what everyone has been waiting for. Toby, this must cost you so much money to run. Your energy bill must be massive. Your networking bill must be giant. Enormous. Your energy company must want to shut you down. And not to mention the rent. All right, let's talk about the finances. Giving away stuff for free doesn't typically make you money. However, we live in the modern age. Everything makes you money. Anything online, if you can put an advert on it, it makes you money. But first, let's go into the costs a little bit. Right. Oh yes, we're gonna get a little diagram going. Are you ready for this breakdown? Last month, my energy bill for the entirety of Play.Hosting was 348 pounds. That is how much electricity cost, okay? That's like the servers just being turned on. There's a few more expenses as well, but I'm gonna explain to you why these expenses don't matter as much. For hosting this kind of like online infrastructure, you need two networking lines. You need a primary and you to fail over backup. My primary network costs around 350 pounds a month. Then plus my secondary network, which is around 78 pounds a month. However, me being the Twitch streamer I am, I am already paying this just for my Twitch stream. And I'm already paying for this backup because when we do big shows and productions and stuff, people like to take the stream down in the ways that they typically do. I don't consider this here as much of a play hosting cost as this up here is because I'm already paying this. When Whereas the power is the new expense for Play.Hosting. So you put all of that together, all right, we're gonna say about 900 pounds a month for all of the outgoings to host these 100,000 plus Minecraft servers. Now, I'm going to show you how much money it makes. In the last 28 days, Play.Hosting has made 450 pounds off adverts alone. And if you remember me saying, the energy bill was only 348 pounds, which means there is a 102 pound profit off energy and adverts alone. But with Play.Hosting, this isn't the only way I make money. You could be like, okay, that's all well and good. You, you've made around 100 pounds a month while selling nothing and giving Minecraft servers out for free. But is it good enough for a business? Can a business survive only making 100 pounds a month? Well, no, there's no room to expand. Once we hit max capacity, there is no room to expand because the money we have is the money we have. 100 pounds is not enough to buy you a new server that can host another 100 Minecraft instances. You can't do that with 100 pounds. You would have to wait 40 months in order to buy a new server, which then isn't sustainable. You can't do that. But I recognize that, which is why this isn't the only way Play Hosting makes money. We also make money through affiliate codes. So Play.Hosting isn't just a project I do with myself. It's a partner with a traditional hosting company called Lilypad, which offer paid servers. However, the people on Play Hosting, they might want their server to be online 24 seven. And as a free host, that's not something we can provide. What we go is we go, hey, our friends over at Lilypad can give you the server of your dreams online 24-7, all of the RAM you could want, all the player capacity you can want, but we just ask that you use our affiliate link. And that's exactly what this program is. So as you can see, in the last month that Play Hosting has been running, there has been 305 signups to the paid host. And I've, so far, I've been paid out £416 last month. And this month, we're on track. I don't know if you can see that here. This is the balance here because this is since the first of the month and it's the 17th, we're on track to make another 600 pounds of revenue from the affiliate program alone. So while we have these adverts and these ads help so 
much to make money for play.hosting. The ads cover the electricity with a 100 pound profit. And then we then have an additional 600 pound profit on top from Lilypad, meaning that in a given month, play.hosting will net around 700 pounds of revenue, which now we're getting somewhere. That means that with that current scale, we can afford to buy a new server and new capacity every five months. Not bad. There you go. That's it. That's how everything here works. I wanted to show you how we're able to give away Minecraft servers for free and still make money and make it sustainable. And again, I'm going to reiterate, if you are a Minecraft server network owner, or you own like a popular Skyblock server, or you own a Hardcore Faction server, and you want hosting which is more tailored to explicitly Minecraft, send me an email. I want to get more into the server space. I want to work more with existing server owners to create a network of infrastructure explicitly designed for hosting Minecraft, and the sky will literally be the limit for what we can accomplish together. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Toby Tubbo from the Tub Pewter's channel. If you did enjoy this video, please do drop a sub, drop a like down there. And also, if you have any thoughts about Minecraft servers or want, have any questions about Minecraft server hosting, go down in the comments. I'll try to answer as much as possible. That's all from me. I'll see you next week for a new video if I remember to record one. Hey, 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 hey!